hello people in this video we want to look at anesthesia right uh, the course content okay so you know what anesthetics are right you have local anesthetics and you have uh, general anesthetics so general anesthesia is what drug induced re reversible reversible loss of consciousness and all sensations okay Basically, under surgery, you will have so many things like general surgery, orthopedics, radio diagnosis, radiotherapy and anesthesia. We are looking at anesthesia, 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 whatever you want to say. So, at the end of it, you should be able to enumerate different types of anesthetic agents, their indications, their mode of administration, the contraindications, side effects, everything you should know. Basically, pharmacology full revision. You should know how to do CPR, right, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, then you should uh, know how to set up IV, IV infusion. Then clear and maintain airway in an unconscious patient. You should main this airway, airway. Okay. Then you will know how to do endotracheal intubation. Endotracheal. Okay. Why are the trachea? Endotracheal intubation. Then administer oxygen correctly. You should know how to give oxygen. Perform simple nerve block. Guys, now we will move on to the course content. So basically the syllabus, history and scope of anesthesia. History you should know. History. Anatomy of upper airway. So go back to anatomy, then physiology of respiration, carbon dioxide, oxygen transport, various methods of oxygen therapy. Oxygen therapy. Okay. This one you should know. Then pre-operative evaluation, pre-medication. This is important. You should first evaluate whether the person is eligible for anesthesia, what type of anesthesia. All this we have covered in pharmacology, isn't it? If you remember our pharmacology video, we have actually told in that how you will evaluate for anesthesia, chest x-ray and check what age and and if you remember our pre-anesthetic medication videos, diazepam, uh, glycopyrrolate, morphine, diclofenac, ondan, cetron, omeprazole for gastric acid, metaclopramide, ranitidine, so many drugs, right? Pre-anesthetic. So go and look at the pre-anesthetic medication videos. Inhalation anesthetic agents. Classification you have already seen. Inhalational you have uh, nitrous oxide for especially obstetrics, halothane and so other than inhalation, what do you have? Parenteral, parenteral, uh, what and all you should know, ketamine, dissociative anesthesia, something, right? Opioids, fentanyl, benzodiazepine they have included here, slow acting, propofol, propofol you remember, okay? Theopentone, all these are important names. Then they are expecting you to know stages of anesthesia, we have already covered this in pharmacology. So look at this. Uh, Stages of anesthesia, right? So you should know what are the stages. Stage 1, analgesia. Stage 2, delirium. Stage 3, surgical anesthesia. Stage 4, medullary paralysis. But this is not the right thing, right? Should not reach here. So basically, where will you do the surgical operations? Here. Stage 3, uh, 1. 1 is what? 1 of stage 3. Most of the surgical operations are here. Okay. You should know these terminologies, minimum alveolar concentration, etc. So let's go back to the syllabus, guys. So where were we here? So then the principles and mechanism of administration of general anesthetics. How will you administer general anesthesia? So there are very uh, many different things, right? See, local itself they are saying is surface anesthesia, topical, infiltration anesthesia, nerve block anesthesia, spinal anesthesia. Then you have epidural anesthesia then intravenous regional anesthesia other than this then you have the uh, general so whatever you're seeing in this table no all these are local anesthesia techniques okay routes of administration when it comes to general they have iv etc okay inhalational iv so just look at this routes of administration now let us move on there's a terminology here, balanced anesthesia, you should know this. On a high level, this means that instead of giving a single agent large dose, it's better to give two or more agents in smaller doses. Then let us look at this IPPV. IPPV is what in anesthesia? Intermittent positive pressure ventilation. 
Okay, spontaneous ventilation, intermittent. What is PP? Positive pressure ventilation. So, it is artificial ventilation. Then you have to know endotracheal intubation. So, we were here, right? Endotracheal intubation. Okay, guys. So, you have to learn this. Then muscle relaxants. What is muscle relaxants? Skeletal muscle relaxants, you have already studied centrally acting, peripherally acting, right? Centrally acting, you have diazepam, benzodiazepine, other, that means other benzodiazepines. Diazepam is an example of uh, benzodiazepine, right? Then um, uh, baclofen, gabapentin, methocarbamol, all these you have to know, right? Then coming to peripherally acting, you have uh, directly acting on the neuromuscular junction, directly acting on the muscle itself like dantrolin, right? Uh, then uh, neuromuscular junction, you have depolarizing and non-depolarizing, right? Depolarizing, you have succinylcholine, that is succamethonium and decamethonium. Then you have de non-depolarizing, competitive, like you have uh, uh, detubercularin, pancuronium, all these you should know. Procuronium, Atracurium, Cisatracurium, Mivacurium, all these names you should know. Then others they have given boto, botulinum toxin A. Okay. Dantrolin, they actually it is used to treat side effect of antipsychotic drugs, malignant syndrome, hyperthermia, malignant hyperthermia due to succinylcholine plus general anesthesia that is uh, halothane. To treat that they use Dantrolene, IV dantrolene, isn't it? If you want to reverse <clears throat> the neuromuscular block, how do you do it? Edrophonium, neostigmine, all these will increase the concentration of acetylcholine and reverse the effect of detubocurarin. Okay. So here, one more point is there here. You should use atropine prior to administration. Use of Prior atropine administration is necessary to block the muscarinic effects of anticholine esterases. Okay. Under anesthesia, where we are currently, now we finished muscle relaxants. Now spinal and epidural anesthesia, what we know about these. Spinal anesthesia. So when do you use this? It's a very popular form of anesthesia. Injected into subarachnoid space. So basically it is used for surgical procedures which are below the umbilicus. Okay, like lower limb surgery, cesarean section, appendectomy, obstetric procedures, right? So there will be no loss of consciousness. Okay, so people who have uh, cardio, uh, cardiac issues or pulmonary issues or renal issues, they will tolerate spinal anesthesia better than general anesthesia. For spinal anesthesia, what and all do they give? Lignocaine, bupivacaine, all these you can remember. They will add adrenaline to increase the duration and intensity of the block. There are some complications though. So the spinal anesthesia it should not be used in young children, right? In such people it should not be used. When it comes to epidural anesthesia, they have mentioned ropivacaine, etc. Obstetric analgesia. So here they are injecting it into epidural space, right? So, bupivacaine, lignocaine, again, same things they have mentioned. This is safer, but the technique is more difficult. The It is slower in onset and la, it requires large amount of the drugs. Just read all this if you are interested. So, ropivacaine, you can remember. Guys, it's still not over. Still, it's there. Local anesthesia. So, you should know about infiltrating anesthesia, digital block, ankle block, pudendal. Paracervical blocks, regional anesthesia, management of complications of regional anesthesia, you should know. Simple nerve box, you should know how to perform simple nerve blocks, okay. Then you should know how to do CPR, we told you this, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. You And you should know how to use simple ventilators, monitoring, ICU, that is what, intensive care unit, role of anesthesiologist in ICU, you should know, shock then blood transfusion, fluid electro, electoral balance, basics you should know about this. Fluid electoral balance, then sites of respiratory obstruction, management of airway in an unconscious patient, poisoning you should know, role of anesthesiologist in acute and chronic pain relief you should know. Wow, 
Guys, so anesthesia is a huge thing. In this video, we have tried to just give you a brief introduction into anesthesia for MBBS students. Okay, that's all for now. Bye-bye.